Hello everyone, and welcome to a video on all you need to know about the arithmetic sequence. First, let's start with the definition. An arithmetic sequence is a sequence or list of numbers such that the difference between any two consecutive terms is constant. Here are some examples. Here's just the whole integers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Now, to go from 1 to 2, you need to add 1. To go from 2 to 3, you also add 1. Same for 3 to 4 and 4 to 5. There is a constant difference, which means this is an arithmetic sequence. Let's look at this one. 2, 5, 8, 11, 14. Well, you're adding 3 each time. 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 3 is 8 plus 3 is 11, 14, and so on. So this also is an arithmetic sequence. This one is not. This is actually called the geometric sequence because you're multiplying each time. You're multiplying by 2. But the difference is not constant. The factor is, but the difference isn't. So that means this is not an arithmetic sequence. Okay, before moving on, let's quickly define some variables. D is the common difference. A1 is the first term a2 is the second term, a3 is the third term, etc. And generally speaking, a sub n is the nth term. Now in this video, I'm going to focus on two, two formulas. A formula to find the nth term, and a formula to sum the series. Alright, first let's talk about finding the nth term. Now, you could find the term just by adding the constant difference over and over from one term to the next to the next to the next to the next but since you're adding the common term so many times it would be easier just to multiply by a factor of a common term and add that and that's how the general formula is derived for finding the nth term that's what I'm going to show you right now start with a sub 1 equals a sub 1 pretty boring so we move on to a sub 2 a sub 2 is the common difference d greater than a sub 1. So it can be written as a sub 1 plus d. a sub 3 is d greater than a sub 2. So it's a sub 1 plus d plus another d, or a sub 1 plus 2d. a sub 4 is again d greater than the preceding term, which means it's a sub 1 plus 2d plus another d, or a sub 1 plus 3d. And this pattern continues. 8 sub 5 equals a sub 1 plus 4d. a sub 6 equals a sub 1 plus 5d, etc. Now notice, a sub 2 is a sub 1 with 1d added. a sub 3 is a sub 1 with 2d added. a sub 4 has 3d added. a sub 5 has 4d added, etc. It's, it's one less d than the nth term. So generally speaking, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. You just extrapolate the pattern and you get the general formula, and it always works. If there's an arithmetic sequence, this is how you find the nth term. Okay, let's look at uh, an exercise. Find the 25th term of an arithmetic sequence with a 12th term of 35 and a common difference of 3. Now, uh-oh, they haven't given us the first term, but we actually don't need it. Watch. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. We know the 12th term. It's 35. So a sub n at 12 is 35 equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1, 12 minus 1, times the common difference of 3. So 35 equals a sub 1 plus 11 times 3, which is 33, and you can clearly see a sub 1 equals 2. Now we can go back to the general formula and find the 25th term. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. a sub 25 equals a sub 1, which we found is 2, plus 25 minus 1 times d, which, I'm sorry, times 3. So a sub 25 equals 2 plus 
24 times 3, which I believe is 72. It's 60 plus 12. Yes, that's 72. So 2 times 2 plus 72. A sub 25 equals 74. And that is the final answer. All right, let's talk a little about summing the series. Um, there's actually an interesting story as to how this formula came about. When Gauss was a little child, he outsmarted his teacher. The teacher asked him to add 1 through 100 and thought it would be busy work, but he did it really quickly and got the right answer. And I'll um, write the entire story in the description if you're interested. But let me just show you what Gauss was probably thinking. So he had to add up... He had to add up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 100. He did not just add it up um, consecutively. Instead, he paired 1 with 100, that's 101, 2 with 99, that's 101, 3 with 98, that's 101. So he paired off the 100 numbers into 50 pairs each of 101. So 50 pairs of 101, and the total of sum is 5,050, and that's the correct answer. Um, let me show you how we can uh, use this kind of logic to derive a general formula. It's a very beautiful formula. Okay, you start out with um, an arithmetic sequence, a1 plus a2, which we're going to write as a sub 1 plus d plus a sub 1 plus 2d, etc. All the way to a sub n. We'll say this, that sum is equal s. That's what we're looking for. Now, in order to pair them up, we're just going to write this backwards. s equals a sub n plus, and we'll write the term less than a sub n. a sub n minus 1 is a sub n minus d because it's just going backwards. This way you add a d, and since you're doing it the reverse, you're subtracting d. Plus a sub n minus 2d, plus all the way to a sub 1. All right, so now you have the two, uh, the same arithmetic sequence from right and forward and backwards. Now you can pair them up by adding it. 2s is equal to, pair this up, a sub 1 plus a sub n, pair this up, the d's cancel, a sub 1 plus a sub n, same here, a sub 1 plus a sub n, and so on. Again, this is just the same thing as over here, just just a different way of writing it, more, more formal, more algebraic. So 2s is equal to there's a total of n terms, so there's a total of n pairs. n pairs of a sub 1 plus a sub n. This kind of looks like a z. Okay, 2s equals n times a sub 1 plus a sub n, which means that the sum is n times a sub 1 plus a sub n over 2. And that's the general formula. You can do a quick check with the numbers 1 through 100. So the sum of 1 through 100, there's 100 terms times a sub 1 is 1, a sub n is 100, divided by 2. 1 plus 100 is 101, divided by 2 is 50.5, times 100 is 5050. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Um, once again, these are the two formulas that you really want to know. probably want to commit them to memory, finding the nth term, and summing the series. Okay, thank you for watching.